Hello, Jacob here, and here I have kind of an unboxing, or I guess kind of my decision making and solving process through Hunt a Killer. Now, my friend had bought this for me, which was very cool of him. This uh, isn't the cheapest, however, it, it does offer supposedly hours of entertainment with each month, with each delivery, so you know, considering that, it's actually pretty cheap. Um, so, um, I did open this up and did kind of look through some things um, initially, just because uh, I didn't really know what to expect, but after looking through some of this, I thought it'd be really cool to make a video, because it is really awesome, it is really in-depth, and I do encourage you guys to take a look at it and maybe, you know, give it a shot. Um, maybe give this as a present, or maybe even something for it to do for yourself, because I found it pretty pretty interesting. So, this did come, come in a manila envelope, and so here's what the package looks like. Of course, uh, th awesome Texas. Post service does offer some damage with every delivery. Um, so, what we have right off the bat here is before opening your mystery, um, to text this number. Upon doing so, it kind of welcomes you and gives you a link um, to basically kind of an introduction, kind of an explanation. Because if you don't know what you're doing, it could be pretty confusing at the beginning. You know, you don't really know how to approach things, what things mean, or what to kind of expect um, when you uh, you know when you get this. Over on their side here, we have a number, two numbers, one to call in a text, an email, and of course the website. Um, you know, look, going through this website, again, it does offer you a little bit of an idea of what to expect. Um, does offer you an opportunity to become a member so you can become involved in certain things and become part of like forums and helping people, um, help people come together to help solve things. But I don't think we need that. I think we can do it ourselves here. So let's open it up. Up, um, up on the inside here, we get a lot of things. What we have here, we have a little pen and a notebook, which I thought is pretty cool, so you can take some notes. Um, it all It is all recycled stuff. You take a look at the pen here, it is kind of a tight piece of wood and obvious, obvious recycled cardboard, which is pretty cool. You have here a little bookmark. Um, again, kind of giving you some information on how to connect with other people. Um, and on the other side here, it tells you, welcome to initiation episode number one. This month contains eight items. And again, password for this episode is below here. So I'm thinking that this kind of guides you to show you, hey, did I miss anything? Do I have everything? Because I would imagine if something's missing in your package, it'd be pretty hard to go through and solve everything. But it also, got it, but it also kind of gives you a hint. Um, I did go to, to this to kind of see what this is all about. And yeah, basically it's just there to say, hey, Here's everything that you have. Make sure you have everything. And if you do get stuck, it does, does offer not only hints, but all other solu also solutions. But again, I don't think we need that. It does come with a little pin, which I thought was also pretty awesome. And it does kind of come with, again, kind of an introductory thing. Kind of tells you about the company, people behind it, the writers, um, the community, again, forums, meetups, other things to help kind of get people involved and connecting to make this a little more fun and perhaps, you know, um, kind of share with other people about your experiences. So I can kind of put these off to the side here. So the first two big things we have in this package is going to be two envelopes here. On first section, we have Listening Friends of America. It looks like the uh, postage here is from two different places. One's from Maine, one's from Montana. So. Um, I did go ahead and make a note of that. I did write that down. I also see here, see here on the bottom, inspected by MG package ID. So that might come in handy a little bit later. So again, we'll kind of keep that in mind. So I'll go ahead and kind of remove some of these things. Now in kind of the introductory, it did say, hey, make sure not to throw anything away. Um, there can be clues, not only on the inside, but the outside of packages here. So I did, I did want to make sure that I do keep everything and that I don't throw everything away. So let's kind of open these up here. I guess I'll kind of and start with, with this one. And in here we have a folded folder with some information. So we have F, so that might be something of importance here. And again, we have some information here, some things, and it looks like, it looks like some documents, some maybe some notes, some letters, and that might come in handy um, about maybe our killer or a person of interest here. So I'll kind of put that off this side. Over here we have ooh, all sorts of stuff. And some letters and some notes. Again, we'll put this off to the side. I'm sure this will come in handy. So we have a letter inspected. We have listening friends of America kind of note. 
we have a little picture here. We have a <laughs> we have a watch, pocket watch, very cool. And we have an already opened up letter. Rude, isn't that a federal crime? Anyway, so looks like we have some other information here. All right, so I guess we'll start with the beginning here. Listening friends of America. Dear listening friend, thank you so much for becoming part of our family. I'd like to apologize before we get too far along in my awkward letters. I'm not usually writing our volunteers, but my superiors have sent it down that we are working on a new initiative to keep you a little more in the loop than the usual crowd. To be honest, I usually I do not usually write at all. All right, so here we have kind of a letter to us. It looks like this person is kind of being overly apologetic about being awkward. So maybe that's kind of there to kind of um, explain why there may be some some awkward language that might be you know because of clues or some sort of code or something. But also like that we are kind of singled out because not again as we can see um, you know more than the usual crowd. So we're kind of singled out. We're kind of chosen to do something. It's kind of interesting. First, I want you to I want to let you know about a new initiative passed in the Listening Friends family. It is very important to all of us that we ensure your safety and well-being. Present to that, you can access my notes and items that are present. Okay, so, so it looks like this is from Meg. I'm assuming this is what the MG is here. So it looks like we have access to her notes too, which can probably like, you know, give us some more information about the case. To access the notes, I've taken a friend. Okay, so, so basically we have a website we can go to, listeningfriendsofamerica.org, and click on Inspect Your Notes Database. You can follow the easy two-step process on the screen. Your package ID is stamped on the envelope you receive from our facility. So this must be this here. So then a little bit about me. My name is Megan, but I prefer Meg. It is what my friends call me, and I think it fits better. I like to hike up the M and hang out on the summit. Ooh, that's probably a clue. Um, you know, we have the big letter M. I'm assuming that, you know, in language it probably stands for mountain. I like to hike up the mountain and stand on this thing, but, you know, again, we'll keep that in mind, make a little note of that. that that's kind of interesting. I am an inspector here at Listening Friends Bosman. Bosman? We are in an old building and only have a handful of patients. So with our limited resources, we operate a little differently than our other facilities. Much of what we do involves maintaining the Listening Friends archive. Interesting, okay. So not only do they inspect things, but I guess they kind of keep a lot of records on the residents. I wonder who these residents, residents are and why Listening Friends of America kind of houses them or keeps them prisoner. Uh, what, what patients we do have here are a bit quirky, but I think they're a bunch of really nice people. I hope this works out, I, and, I hope you, and I hope you stay with us. It is always nice to grow the fam, especially when we all fit together. That's kind of interesting. Enjoy getting to know your friend, and I'll be in touch next month. Thanks for listening. Okay, so this kind of not only maybe gives us some clues, but also kind of explains the kind of, you know, organizational structure of this game, kind of explaining, hey, we get this once a month because this person only writes once a month. We have Meg Gibson, Inspector, again, kind of directing us to this website again. So I suppose we could, she should probably eventually go visit that website and I'll probably kind of open up the universe a little bit. So we have, looks like Meg inspected this letter, gave it a passing review, but of course we know there's going to be probably some clues in here. Dear Jasper, well I'm not Jasper, so let's kind of see maybe what's in here. Maybe Jasper is our person or Sylvia is our person. Looks... All right, gruesome murder scene found at the computer museum. Cool. We have something here. Hello, new friend. And it looks like it's from, I guess, Jasper. So maybe this is a present from Jasper, something a little bit from Sylvia. We don't know who Sylvia is yet. Hello, new friend. They tell me you are going to listen to my story. How exciting. I've always admired the typewriters in this writing room they call the study. And now I finally have an excuse to use one. Well, I had to make do with what is available. The pickings were slim, and most of these do not work. This was the best I could find, and still two keys are broken. I think it is simply incredible that all of these levers and gears work together to produce thoughts and ideas recorded permanently on paper, although I suppose a thought is only as permanent as the paper it is printed on. Or perhaps a thought is always a beginning, 
its purpose to evolve when the paper changes hands. Speaking of beginnings, if you are going to throw, know my story, then I suppose you should hear at the beginning, should you not? I was born to a lovely set of parents who abandoned me when I was three. I guess lovely is being a little sarcastic. My first, my first foster parents tor tortured each other with their mediocrity. My second family was full of delusional idealists, stuck in this generic mode of family sitcoms. When I turned 16, I was able to get a job with a pawnbroker down the road, Manny. He taught me quite a lot, and I will be forever grateful to him for waiting those essential pieces of me. Ooh, interesting. After Manny retired, a couple of years later, I took up employment with a, I guess, so I guess the J is, is stuck here, a jeweler named Sylvia, and she introduced me to hor, hor, uh, horology. I guess I'll have to look that up. I don't know what that is. This is the final piece of my puzzle. So I guess J's and Z's are must be the two keys that are broken here. And it fit into place like a tightly wound hair spring. I give to you a simple watch from my collection one that I hope will trigger an aesthetically pleasant reaction. All right. Now I am here, and you are somewhere out there, reading, these, reading this letter. It is sad that two people who would share such a tactile tether should stay so far removed from one another, and, but, it is, but it is all a matter of perspective. The thumatrope I have provided illustrates this well. Two ideas seemingly opposite, that when viewed under certain conditions, become one. There are no visitors here, but I do hear from Sylvia every now and again, perhaps three or four times a year. This keeps me up to date on the comings and goings outside of these, outside of these walls. She's important to me, therefore she will be important to you. I have included a copy of one of her letters so that you may become acquainted. Ah, so this, this is the letter to Jasper from this Sylvia here. I cannot write her back there are certain protocols that must be followed. Even if I could, however, there are things that I cannot tell her, things that I believe she is somehow not ready to hear. But you can hear them, can you not? Of course you can. This is what we signed up for. To be more accurate, this is what you signed up for and with that, and with what I was told to comply. Wow, this is really interesting. There's a lot of kind of hidden meanings here that will probably open up you know, as the months go on. I will play along because things are going well at the moment, and I do not want to throw a wrench into the system, as it were. So it sounds like you might be kind of being kind of forced into this. That is why, without oh, that oh, it must be like without a J or a Z, I can tell you between noon and halfway around that. It looks like we have a bunch of numbers. That was accordingly, Jasper. Okay, so this is obviously a code here. Looks like times, you know, between noon and halfway around. Yeah, they they do start, you know, at 12 and don't really go into six. So we have kind of a code, it's every, it's every 15 minutes. So if this is gonna be like a code to like letters or something, that means there's gonna be four every hour. So that, okay, so that means, you know, 24. So that means there's gonna be, okay, okay. Interesting, interesting, okay. So I'm sure this, I'm sure we'll be figuring this out, right? Nothing else is in this envelope. I'll kind of put this off to the side here. All right, let's learn about Sylvia. Dear Jasper, as always, I hope you're doing well. I'll be positive. Oh, geez, this stamp is kind of covering this up here. I'll be positive and something the best since you have no way to tell me otherwise. Okay, well, so that's really interesting. So Jasper, I guess, can't send out messages, but he can receive messages. Do you remember my last letter when I something you was invited to at Artisan Expo in Helena? All right, so I'll be positive and assume the best, since you have no way of telling me otherwise. Do you remember my last letter when I... Oh, when I told you I was invited to that Artisan Expo in Helena. Well, it seems that one of the committee members has a grudge against my old instructor. So he found some arbitrary reason to cut down my demonstration time from two hours to 30 minutes. Can you believe that? 
that I am expected to make in just 30 minutes, a, or what am I expected to make in such, in such 30 minutes? A molten blob? I would look like a complete joke. So I sent them a very apologetic cancellation email the, the night before the expo. I'm sure they had no trouble finding another apprentice trained in medieval glass blowing. A little sarcasm there. Well, anyway, on to better news. After all these years, I finally got around to expanding the back workshop. You know, I always hated how dusty and cramped it was, although you never seemed to mind. It was like your little safe haven, wasn't it? Well, I had to make room for new equipment and more workstations. Recently, I hired some assistants to help me with a rather ambitious project. Ooh, mysterious. They're pretty capable, but none of them have your natural talent, unfortunately. I'm sure I'll never find anyone as meticulous as you. I guess all these changes at Carte du Monde have me feeling sentimental. I can't stop thinking about the past lately. Back unnecessary comma then, I tried my hardest to get you to open up to me. I didn't want to pry, so eventually I just let it be, but now I feel like I should have tried harder. Maybe I could have helped you. That's what friends do for each other. Do you still consider me a friend, Jasper? I know I say this every time, but I wish there was some way for you to contact me. Everything feels so one-sided, but every story has two sides, doesn't it? So, so hope, uh, someday I hope to hear yours. You don't have to hide everything from me anymore. There's nothing you could tell me that would make me change my opinion of you. You know that, right? Take care, Sylvia. P.S. For gold rings, I start with aquamarine first and move forward from there. For silver rings, I start with zir oh, zirconium, just a bad copy, zirconium first and move back. Okay, interesting. So that's obviously a code. For gold, you go down the alphabet. For Z, you go up the alphabet. Okay, so we'll have to see kind of what that is all about here, too. Okay, so here we have, and I don't know if you can kind of see this well, but we have here kind of a, uh, oh, okay. So this is a, um, again, you, you may have kind of seen this. I'm sure this is, be, um, you know, those pieces of paper with a bird on one side and a cage on the other. When you spin it, um, they look like they're together. Well... I don't think I need to do this, but I can kind of read out that there's a word teeth on here, which with one of these kind of being the other half here, with a lot of gears and kind of other springs in here. So very mechanical and, you know, teeth, like, like uh, I guess, teeth of some gears or something. Cut out circles, there are four circles, paste together, graphic side out, <laughs> duh. Tie rubber band, oh yeah, so this is just kind of having you make I guess what he referred to, let's see, where do you talk about this? So here we have here the, the chemistrope. I have provided illustrates this well. All right, so, so he's kind of all about different perspectives and I guess teeth is a clue, so we'll write down teeth and make sure that uh, we, we, we know this here. All right, gruesome murder scene found at computer museum. Maybe this is what Jasper did. Killer remains at large. Police urge community to be vigilant and cooperative. Local authorities are scratching their heads over a recent murder to shake the local community. A body was discovered by a night watch attendant at the American Computer and Robotics Museum. According to police, the body was dismembered at every major joint and the chest cavity was excavated. Detectives are currently investigating and so have refused to publicly identify the victim. The sheriff's department has made assurances, though a press release, that they are doing everything that can be done in a thing like this. The employee working the night watch has, according to police, asked for an employee in this case. The museum has not yet responded to a request for, commit, for comment at time of press. Authorities are asking that everyone with information that, with information that they be helped call, call the sheriff's department. Okay. Oh. And it looks like this is not uh, just kind of a back end, not, not involved at all, but we'll read through it anyway. Just thought it was a f would be a fun experiment. I never thought that something like this could happen, said Caldwell. While he didn't win first place, he didn't seem discouraged from pursuing his scientific career. The fair has, is graded a lot on method. How well you do the f with found that. How well you do with following the right procedure or how accurate you are with recording data. That kind of stuff. I think if I can do all that better, then I'd definitely win for sure. Actually, I'm going to try it out at the county one. 
Codwell's teacher, Jennifer uh, Fioranda, Fioranda, is understandably impressed by her student, despite not bringing home the blue ribbon, though it may have less to do with the young man's science and more with his ability to be in the right place at the right time. He's got quite a bit of imagination, but I think a lot of luck. How he caught a baby moose in the first place is confounding. I assume the poor thing wandered into his home. But then, to corral it in the shower had to have taken some ingenuity. All of, the, all of his observations seem genuine, but to get to that point in the first place, he's one lucky kid. Wow, that's very interesting. All right, so we do have some information. We have Jasper, we have Sylvia, we have this mysterious murder, we have some science fair about Codwell, and I guess, oh, uh, well, teeth. Okay, so we'll make some notes of those, and we'll get back to that. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so looks like a lot of this is probably online. We probably have to do some, we probably have to do some in, you know, kind of investigation and some other things like that. Okay, so what do we have here? F. Felix, ex literis, listening friend. Welcome to the listening friends. Oh, oh, oh. Listening friend, welcome to the Listening Friends of America family. As the head of the table, so to speak, I have personally intervened in our standard procedures and assigned to you our assigned you to our new friend myself. Looking at your background, you seem very capable of dealing with this particular situation that is of great personal concern. Hmm. I know Mr. Flowers has done something unusual and beyond the parameters of this station, of his station. I just do not know what it is. I cannot tell you yet why I say this, at least not yet, but I believe very strongly that whatever he has done will greatly harm Listening Friends of America and our mission. You must find out what he has done so we can remedy the, the situation before it is too late. Mr. Flowers has, is located in our Bosnian facility, and there is a particularly sensitive situation here. You may need to look into the archives. So giving us a little bit of direction here. I provided a back door as an access point to you beneath the newsletters. You'll see it. Oh, interesting. I have also included in the enclosed file what information on Mr. Flowers we may have that may, well, yeah, we have that may be relevant. You have six months. If you are unsuccessful after that, we will deal with Mr. Flowers some some other way, and I hope for the best. I expect to hear expect to hear from me again at a time to be determined. Good luck, Felix. Okay, so I guess maybe this this uh, this scenario only lasts six months. You know, there's only six packages, and hopefully we can figure it out. Felix. All right, so this must be Flores. You know, Jasper Flores' file here. Resident intake. First impressions. Jasper Flowers, two thousand four observations. Looks like he's neat and normal. He has full affect, mood. So he is he's normal of he's normal of appearance. He's normal of mood. That's a big nice word for him, essentially normal. He's not anxious or depressed or euphoric or irritable. Cognition. So he is oriented, but not to person. So he knows where he is or what's going on, but he doesn't know who he is. He must have some, you know, like maybe some disassociative disorder or something. Memory impairment, none, attention, normal. Comments, difficulty displaying empathy. Okay. So he's probably on a psychopathy spectrum of some sort. Perception, hallucination, none, other, yet deep personalization. Okay, so he is unempathetic, and he doesn't know who he is. So he is basically definitely very um, separated from society. Again, what kind of your average person would probably call a psychopath. Thoughts. He's not delusional. He's not suicidal. He is cooperative, but he's also bizarre. Compliant, but often spoke circumstances. Okay, and so yeah, so because he, he doesn't know who he is, and he has a hard time maybe kind of organizing his thoughts here. Insight good, judgment poor. Name Jasper Flowers. Male, birthday, reason for assessment. Okay, so this is his first assessment, so kind of like it is a mission assessment here. Never married. We have an address in Montana, so I'll definitely have to look that up. Facility code, unit code, 
Inpatient status, nothing's checked. Capacity, he is, he is capable to consent for treatment. He is capable to disclose information relating to a clinical record, capable of, to manage property, and has a substitute decision maker for personal care or financial decisions. Interesting, so he has somebody who will speak on his behalf, I guess. Okay, okay. Reasons for admission, because he's a danger to others. He is not a danger to himself. He is not addicted to anything. He is, he is able to care for himself. Um, however, specific psychiatric symptoms, depression, hallucinations, medication side effects, involvement with criminal justice systems. Okay, yeah, so he got in some trouble here. Probably perhaps. Pleaded insanity at trial. Forensic events, evidence verified. Capality does not empathize with others. Very disassociative. Okay. So he's at fault and he completed insanity here. Subject inhibits a tendency toward de-individualization even especially in small group settings. Maintains an abnormally inconsistent sense of self ranging from undeveloped to debilitating self-consciousness. Maybe has per, maybe has different multiple personalities, perhaps. Maybe one of his personalities is the uh, is the killer here. Subject has demonstrated threatening speech and aggressive posturing, though has not yet behaved violently during residency. He is casual and neat, cooperative, passive, fragmented of thought. You know, kind of going back to the his uh, you know his speech and his thinking process. Depersonalization appropriate. Again, normal of mood. Well, I guess they didn't, they forgot to mark this, but yeah, he's not oriented to himself. Insight present, added, okay. But impaired judgment. So it suggests he lives in an apartment instead of a facility grounds. Maintain, so suggested changes in guidance, maintain close observation, provide plenty of physical stimulation, reevaluate in six months, sedate if necessary. Listening Friends of America, inter office. Oh, so we have a memo to Warren Jones from Clark Love regarding a new patient work assignment, 5040, which you might remember is Jasper's code. Yeah, this is uh, his resident ID. It's my recommendation that 5040 stay out of the garden. I tried him out. I, I, I tried. I tried him out. Oh, I, I, sorry. I tried him out there as a joke, but he ruined a whole bed before I gathered him up. I don't think the guy has a sense of humor. Funny thing though, the lawn mower he used to cut down the landscaping was broken and collecting dust in the junk shed. So he must have gone in there, found it, and fixed it. I thought that was plenty. Was pretty go get him of him. So I asked if he could take a look at the old grandfather clock in the lobby. He did a bang up. He did a bang win job on the clock repair. Maybe we can turn that into a job with regular rotation. I think he'd enjoy that. If machines are his thing, I'll try him out in the basement and see if he can give me a hand down there. Other than that, I think we'd. I think he'd be up for doing almost anything. He's got a hell of a work ethic. I think once he puts his mind to something, he won't stop until he sees it all the way through. I like that about him. Okay. So he's very mechanically inclined. And as we saw, he's into clocks and, and, and into workshop. But with the whole landscape thing, so maybe he's confused by organic and life. Um, it looks like he destroyed it. And in order to do so, he had to uh, fix a broken lawnmower. To Warren Jones from Dr. Willa Cortez regarding Cobra 81 and our, and our patient Jasper Flowers. Warren, per your request, we tested the subject at 5.45 this morning. Upon the start of the test, he was quiet and calm. He began by surveying the area from his chair before rising. He then moved to each station and examined each one for roughly 30 minutes at a time. Once the entire room has been observed, the subject sat back down in his chair briefly before returning to the first station and began to disassemble each module using a privileged chit to pry open the casing. He then studied the inner mechanisms of the modules until he removed the trigger spring from each, neutralizing them. I suppose that's one way to go about the test, but it's, def but it's the first time I've seen it in 10 years. I recommend we f continue with the program. 
All right, so we have a mysterious testing program, Cobra 81. Looks like he, he solved it, but in an unusual way. He was very, I guess, from this, I guess like he was, he was very methodical. He looked at the big picture and then looked at the small picture. And then, um, yeah, and he removed the trigger spring, which is either to a machine or a gun, actually, I believe, um, neutralizing them. Interesting. So Warren Jones, Dr. Will Cortez, Cobra 76. Okay, so maybe Cobra is the program, maybe the number refers to each testing experiment here. We went back through 76 with, with subject and discovered that he struggles with completion of the test. Okay, so, they t so this was a test that he had done before, went back to it, but he was still having problems with it. The test was done correctly, single blind, with all the usual parameters in place. Subject could not discern which participant was hiding the gold token and which participants were not. Under these conditions, subject became increasingly hostile. At one point, he stood knocking over his chair and he screamed in visible frustration. He then picked up his chair and placed it where it had been before, sat down and began singing a song. Looking back over the tape, I was able to make out the words, you went away and left me because you thought you could hurt me, but I got news for you. I do not believe he was threatening me or anyone else. He appeared to be using the music to soothe himself. We should continue to monitor, but I am curious to see how continued Cobra runs will affect his behavior outside the modules. Okay, so as we kind of guessed before, he's very mechanically inclined, but it, when it comes to life and people, and you know, he kind of becomes confused. Jasper, oh, so this is a message from Jasper Flowers <laughs> down the hall to Warren Jones. Okay, so, Doc, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Jones, I just want to thank you for taking me in and helping me with my situation. I know it must be a very demanding job you must have with so many moving parts to put together. I do not envy the pressure that you must face on a daily basis. Should you need, need assistance with anything, I would like to offer my assistance. I am very talented in several fields and I can make your job easier if only you gave me, if you give me word. All of this is not to say that I believe you are lacking in your duties or in any way failing, sh falling short of your goals. Really, you have collected a staff here that has made my staves very satisfactory. No, I only mean to suggest that I can be a very helpful set of hands to have. Interesting, interesting. So that was 2005. He was, yeah, first taken in 2004. And these memos don't have any sort of dates. Okay. Okay. And so then we have this vault. Now, seeing that I can, this is made out. This is made out of paper, so I can definitely see through it. It looks like maybe that this square here. I might have to like line up with, you know, with a letter, and kind of get a phrase or something. Okay. So I suppose we should uh, kind of turn to the internet and see what we can find. All right, so here we are at listeningfriendsofamerica.org. Um, here we have kind of a website. We have our menus up here. And this is something that anyone can go to. You don't need any sort of password or anything. So if you're curious, feel free to kind of take a look at it. So before we kind of go into it, and maybe before I give it any sort of spoilers, um, let's just kind of take a good overview of oop, all of our pages, right? So connecting those that need it the most, a listening support network for all. So yeah, that's what I thought the vision, who we are, our process, again, you know, looking like a normal business page here. Um, they're all the same page, so we can close that up. And warning, volunteering of, with LFOA may expose you to graphic content and writings of mature nature. A little bit of a disclaimer there. Okay. So let's take a look at listening friend. Oh, listening friends of America here. Inspector database. So we have lots and lots to choose from. Perhaps some are. Let's kind of take a look at some random ones here. Yeah, as so I thought, they're all kind of there, so you don't just easily go to the to the one that we need. Perhaps maybe there's other ones hidden here for the other kind of stories or mysteries. Yeah, that doesn't seem to. 
Okay, so kind of going to our notes here, we're gonna to go to Megs, M-G. Yep, I need to know my alphabet, there we go. M-G, oh, and we have some numbers. Well, we have a package ID, so it looks like it's probably this one. There are spoilers from here on out, so if you are interested in getting them yourself, enjoying the process, do not watch past here. However, if you're curious and just kind of want to see how everything is done, maybe how things are solved, uh, here, here they are. All right, so looking at the database here, follow the steps. Find the inspector initials combined with the first letters of the package below. Click the link and enter the inspector's initials combined with the full package ID. So it's telling us what the password is here. So let's pull that back up here. Okay. Oh, click link below matches first five characters. Oh, so I guess I just did it wrong here. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. So we have here kind of an inventory sheet. Welcome letter, maybe for inspection, welcome to the pleasantries. Patient letter, Jester seems to be missing one of the keys from the typewriter. I'm sure he can figure out how to fix that. <laughs> Thymotrope, what this is. Huh. So she's, she's kind of making the uh, connection that he feels like a trapped bird. I do not see anything wrong with this letter. It passed the incoming in inspection. Interesting that Jasper to have letters coming from inside for listening. So, but it doesn't make sense because they're always the best behavior. And Sylvia seems great. I love the border on her stationery. Such detail. So I have a feeling that this thing is actually kind of kind of cupping to direct us a little bit. Kind of directs us to the, the, the toy. Directs us to the missing letters here. And kind of directing us toward the stationery. So maybe I should take another look at the at the border there. Maybe that'll kind of give us all a clue here. I love Thomas Eatkins, and this is a great example of his work. Okay, so that'll help us to kind of look it up. Pocket watch, this is another reason why Jasper is such a good friend. He's so generous, he gives any billion his personal collection. He projects so much meaning into such of his things, especially his timepieces. Okay, so there's some sort of meaning in that pocket watch. So maybe those two letters on the face of it do actually have something to do with it. And we have here some Latin. Let's take a quick peek at, at that. All right, so it looks like the Latin on there is open ears, open friends. Okay, all right. So, yeah, so let's take a look. Different story here. So volunteer, interestingly enough, you take a look here, it says drinks. <laughs> so uh, due to increase volunteer, a weight system here, so you can kind of enter your information here. Um, this is probably maybe enters into maybe some sort of mailing list for the site, or maybe it's just kind of a misleading there altogether here. But it kind of tells you, hey, you know, let's, let's say you stumbled upon this, thinking it's a real site, kind of letting you know, hey, you know, it's a weightless system here. Okay. So we have the don't, don't, so the maybe it's maybe like if we enter in a certain name and email address, maybe that'll be a kind of a password to something perhaps we'll see in the future here. Donate, thank you, we are happy, yeah, so not accepting any monetary donations. Looks like it may need some updates, talks about 2017 here. And the archives, here we have some newsletters, again, 2017. Now I see this, oh, looks like this is a link, this is probably that uh, clue that Felix is telling us about. Let's open this up here. Oh, interesting, okay. So we have a bunch of things, let's try to Click on a few, see what happens here. Password required, some nonsense. Password required, some nonsense, 1514. Okay. Now, let's go to teeth, because we know we saw teeth here. Oop, and it looks like we also have kind of another hidden object right here. Let's kind of open this up in a new tab. So we have archives, archives. Let's open up teeth here. And yet another password. Okay, so we have to find we have to find some passwords, I believe. 
Okay. All right, so I thought I'd try the first thing, which I felt would probably was the easiest, this kind of time code here. So we have our pen and our handy dandy notebook. I'm gonna use this because I don't wanna mark up my notebook quite yet. And we have kind of our pocket watch. Now looking over the pocket watch, I kind of noticed that, you know, it's your standard pocket watch and it has the, has actually the, the, um, the, 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 the minute, the minutes in there five to 60. But I noticed down here, we actually see a T and a D um, around the six. And so initially I thought maybe that might have been some sort of kind of clue to this, but you know, T and D are not close together. We don't have anything past six o'clock here. Um, so that may be kind of a little bit of red herring or maybe just nothing to do with it at all. Maybe just kind of manufacture here, but I thought I'd just kind of keep that in mind. But kind of going off of my initial, um, my initial guesses here, I thought I'd kind of start off with 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 here. Um, being that is every 15 minutes, I thought I'd just go A, B, C, D, E, F, All right. So, I guess we'll get started here. So, 2i. All right, so obviously I'm not going anywhere with this. All right, so, um, yeah, T and D. Um, well, there's nothing past six o'clock. So there's two letters here, maybe T and D have something to do with that. Um, in the letters here, um, being that he's mechanically inclined, he's able to fix a broken, a broken lawnmower, but yet he can't fix the, you know, the, 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 the keys on this keyboard. I think this is a clue here. So we have a, a J and a Z. So let's maybe start with J. Let's make a new, start with J here. And maybe this will kind of open this up here. All right, yeah, and that's, that's, that's not going anywhere either. Um, let's see here. Ah, oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. Since there are two letters here that don't show up and there's two letters missing, I bet we have to start up with A and then take them out. All right, I think I solved it here. So, albeit some mistakes here. <laughs> Um, I took Manny apart like Humpty Dumpty, but the next time I find a way to best the king's men. All right, so dang, here we have um, <laughs> a clue. So Jasper did end up killing his friend Manny. He didn't just retire, he retired him. Um, and he took Manny apart, so maybe he, you know, is the killer kind of at that... Uh, at that um, at that museum because the museum the victim was again taken apart you know maybe Jasper is trying to figure out humanity in the way he knows how by taking them apart and seeing how each pieces work and makes up that collective whole but unfortunately you know humans don't work like that um, you know Humpty Dumpty you know best the king's men maybe that has to do with uh, the police perhaps or um, but I guess, you know, or maybe, maybe we'll find out something soon. All right, so upon closer inspection on this border, there actually are little tiny S's and G's with, uh, with numbers on them. I can't believe I missed that before. So with this and this, I suppose this will kind of spell out, spell out something, spell out, spell, spell something out, spell out a code or spell out a phrase or, or sentence or something. So I'll go ahead and kind of start here and go around. All right, so hang in there just a little longer. Me, again, 
I should have realized this. I started up on the you know top left like a normal English reader, but this, these guys are all about clocks, right? These guys are all about times. So I should have stopped at started at twelve, which it would have been here and you know hanging there a little longer. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I need to kind of get in their heads a little bit. So Sylvia is definitely planning something with Jasper, hanging there just a little longer, um, and uh, yeah. So we'll kind of save that and see where that goes to. So after some digging, I was able to actually find the, uh, the image here. And it doesn't really appear any sort of different than what's on here. Um, oops, 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 oops. Um, however, the, there is no vault on it. So I thought maybe I'd kind of go back and try that as some of the, the passwords here. Nope. 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 Oh man, okay. So, vault is the password for this with a capital V. Um, and yeah, we have, you know, we have Bosman here. Something here, basically we have some kind of, what initially looks kind of like nonsense but we'll definitely save this, as I'm sure this will come into play later. So from here, I went through the website, I looked at a few things, looked at certain words, even brought up some addresses, looked through other newsletters, kind of wrote down some information, some lore from it. Um, kind of long and boring, and I don't think a lot of it is actually useful for this. I think maybe the newsletters may be useful for maybe a different episode, or maybe something later on this week. But uh, yeah, I compiled basically all the information. I think I solved everything for this week. We have some, so we have some intrigue. We have some ideas of where this may be going, and it's, I'm really excited to see what happens uh, as the months go on. So here is my kind of notes and kind of my recap here. So we have Jaster Flores, patient 5040. He's right around 30 years old. He's currently in the Bosnian uh, Montana facility, and here's kind of the code for that. A uh, neat and normal of appearance, cooperative, disassociative disorder, psychopathic, lack, lacks empathy, mechanically inclined, um, perhaps takes pathology apart to understand, very skilled in it, possible American Computer Robotics Museum murderer, victim taken apart and studied. Focused and has need to finish a task once started, frustrated and violent when not successful, uses a song to calm himself down, and here I have the song that they gave us here, has a substitute decision maker, which I thought was really interesting. You know, who, um, who is that? Is that Sylvia? Thinks he lives in an apartment, but not at the facility. So here's kind of the timeline. Um, he was abandoned at three. He had two foster families, and Jasper has no respect for either of them. Worked for Manny, and as we kind of mentioned with our uh, code here, he uh, killed Manny. But uh, no one knows. Maybe that's his first kill, because he did mention that Manny to kind of set him off on that right path. Um, he is perhaps friends, perhaps more with Sylvia, who's a jeweler. Um, introduced to horology, which is a study of time, which I had to look up, unfortunately. I guess I'm not that smart. Um, and, and the study of time often includes the art of making clocks. That's kind of what this term has kind of evolved into, which we see here. You know, um, Sylvia perhaps makes lots of clocks. He uh, was able to fix that uh, clock at the facility. He gave us this timepiece. Uh, you know, clocks and time are very important to him. Um, learning the horology was the final piece of his puzzle, which we don't quite know what that means quite yet. Sylvie is his eyes and ears to the outside world. You know, does he actually know he's in a facility? Um, and that um, when he believes he's at an apartment, is that just kind of a con that he's doing? Um, he, and we notice that he cannot write to Sylvia. Um, you know, is Sylvia perhaps not real? Perhaps they can't uh, meet or communicate um, because uh, only one of them can take his personality at a time, perhaps. But that was kind of far-fetched. Um, um, you know, maybe she's a patient, too. You know, just kind of, kind of some theories we have here. Um, Sylvia is important to Jasper, um, but Jasper feels shit. he cannot tell her something. Maybe it's the fact that he is a murderer. And the message to me with the clock cipher, um, I actually looked it up later, and that is actually a thing. <laughs> I guess I kind of figured it out, but yeah, clock cipher is actually a thing. If I knew what that was, that would have been a lot easier to figure out. Um, yeah, I took Manny apart like Humpty Dumpty, but the next time I find a way to best the king's men. Uh, Sylvia, Jasper's boss slash business partner. We're not really quite sure how that relationship works out. 
I'm assuming it's kind of his boss since Jasper had his own area, um, but again, time will tell. Uh, she can write him, but he can't or doesn't write back to her. Um, she writes about three or four times a year. Um, she keeps me up to date on the comings and goings inside, outside these walls. So I guess we'll see what that means, you know, with the co that's in the border, perhaps they have something planned, maybe an escape. Um, apprentice trained in medieval glassblowing, recently expanded workshop to hired assistants to help with the ambitious project. Maybe she's building a device or machine or a tool to help get him out. Um, works at the world's map, which was, you know, what that um, translates to. Um, perhaps loves Jasper, opens to Jasper's secret. Secret message and letter says, hang in there just a little longer. Okay, to kind of save some time, I kind of, um, if you go to the website um, and you take a look at the newsletters, I went through them, kind of read them all, it gives information about people, um, one of them has like a little code, um, but I felt I may have been getting off track and that may be something for like another, um, a, a, another game here, but I did write that down just in case it does come back. So Listening Friends of America um, started in 2012. There was a talk of downsizing in 17, which scared a lot of the employees. Right now there's over 2,000 volunteers. They must not have a lot of uh, people who they pay, but volunteers to kind of inspect and kind of care for. It was kind of unknown if these Listening Friends of America is just a program to help people in a facility to kind of talk and connect with others. Um, but it kind of seems like that they actually own some of these facilities, like nursing homes or psychiatric wards too. Reading program in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Each week, uh, residents borrow three books. There's this reading club, and they take donations for books. Again, not, not knowing if this plays into a part of uh, this, of this certain episode of Hunt a Killer, or maybe a different one. I'm just kind of going way too far into it. Felix is head of the table, uh, as he referred to himself. Um, personally intervened into standard procedures and assigned Jasper himself to deal with a particular concern. So he, so there, he is a, a piece of this, and we'll see how he kind of has a, maybe a bigger piece in the future. He knows Jasper has done something unusual, but doesn't know what it is. He hopes to figure it out, hopes that we help figure it out, and believes that it will hurt, um, you know, the listening friends of America and their mission. They're located in Maine, and we have some newsletters on the website. Megan Gibson is an inspector. Um, she operates a little differently in that she involves maintaining of the archives as well. She, she more than just inspects, she also kind of upkeeps these archives. Um, are these archives of what people have written? Are these, um, you know, um, are, are, are the other things, maybe they're related to those tests, um, you know, those COBRA tests, we're not quite sure quite yet. You know, a lot more questions and answers in this episode. Um, opened letter awkwardly apologizing for being awkward. This is kind of weird, especially for an inspector. Uh, superiors a single me as uh, out to help to to help, and she's helping to keep me in the loop. Um, for safety and well-being, able to access my notes at all items at website. So she's helping for my safety and well-being, which is again kind of weird. Does she know something that uh, that, uh, that that we don't? Other people don't this time. She prefers to be called Meg. There's this weird phrase, I like to hike up the M and hang out on the summit. You know, maybe it's a possible code or a future clue. Um, inspector's notes. Um, again, these seem to be kind of hints to the game, helps to help kind of direct us, and I kind of made notes to what those are. You know, hints at the missing keys in the typewriter to kind of help us clue us into that, hey, maybe these letters are important. Um, shows that the welcome letter has no clues. Um, you know, maybe the, the weird sentence structure is kind of a red herring, perhaps. Um, tells us to look at the border, helps us to kind of notice the word bolt, um, and, and uh, you know, kind of, kind of helps us out, essentially. George Madison is the vice president located at Darlington, wrote highlight about Jacob Nilsson. Warren Jones is the director of operations at the Bosman facility. Clark Love put Jasper in the garden as a joke, where he ruined the garden and fixed the lawnmower, had Jasper fix a grandfather clock, and initiated Jasper for the COBRA tests. Dr. Willa Cortez, um, there's some kind of code here, you know, psych, you know I'm assuming psych um, 217, we'll see if that means anything, tests Jasper for Cobra 81 and 76, the one that he passed in a very unusual way and the one that he essentially kind of failed and kind of freaked out about. Recommended Jasper to continue with the program. Uh, Cobra 81, um, tests Jasper at 5.45 in the morning. Multiple stations with tasks at each station. Jasper started by surveying each station from a chair 
and then in a methodical manner, spend half an hour each one just, just examining it, return to the chair briefly, and then again start at first station, very methodical. Open each module with a chit, study the inner mechanisms, and remove the trigger spring of each. Um, I kind of made a little note that trigger spring usually refers to a firearm, but it could refer, refer to kind of any device, really. Uh, we don't really know what the test is, um, but making the guns not work is an unusual way to solve the test, or making the devices not function is an unusual way to solve the test. Um, and Will Cortez is approving of those results. Uh, Cobra 40, I'm sorry, 76 is, you know, test, this is a second test for Jasper. You know, how many previous attempts were there? We don't know. Um, test was done correctly, but Jasper just failed at it. Um, he, had to, he, he became very hostile that when he could not finish, and um, this is something that, that really, really bothers him. Saying a song to calm him down, expects the test to alter behavior outside the modules, and test was about having to determine which, one, which person is hiding the gold. So maybe Jasper is not very good with people, discerning people, understanding people. Um, Jacob Nielsen is at the um, Darlington facility, worked there for about 20 years. He was the first volunteer, and then he was an inspector. Um, you know, what does a volunteer do? Does it just person who inspects stuff? You know, we don't really know. But, she, but, but he was kind of called out for helping residents feel at home. Dr. Henry Kohler, head psychologist at Bose, Idaho, published three books on forensic psychology, um, and, he, and he, they specifically called out a book about uh, people declaring legal insanity, um, having it as an excuse, so that way instead of being punished, they're kind of given help for their crimes. Um, he is an expert testimony on malingering, which is, again, referring to um, the legal insanity cases. Enjoys cooking, has golden retrievers, has a wife, loves to collect books, and has many bookshelves. Um, Grayson DeMarco, director. Carolyn Harving is a nurse, and she helped a resident from escaping using her words. She's been there for 14 years. And again, just some kind of information on her. Mina Lopez, um, she's an HR manager at one of the facilities. And then I kind of have that uh, kind of interesting back end of the uh, newspaper clipping about Codwell and the science fair and the teacher. And then I kind of have little notes about the newsletters, which again, I feel are um, probably, again, for another case. Uh, on the bottom of, of each of these newsletters, there's kind of like a little game. Uh, the first one is um, just a simple uh, code. Um, I basically just kind of, um, I'm sure there was some sort of clue perhaps in another episode that gives you a number for the alphabetic shift. I just started with a three letter word, assumed it was the, and went with it, and that actually ended up working. But, that it, but it comes out to the pilot was born this year, 25 years later he never made it to and then I checked it, it wasn't me, there's actually a misspelling of Brazil. Now the creators of this game are pretty meticulous, so I think this is a code for something. It wasn't just an oversight on their part. Um, I did look this up, and it does report, uh, refer to a pilot, Paul Redfern, and that was kind of a dead end for me, but again, um, you know, we'll see if this plays out in the future. Uh, newsletter two, uh, there's kind of a, um, a, a, a a, um, a, a um, question that refers and answers fingerprints, something that we all have and we have, but we always leave it behind. And then the third one is just a fact about whips, which again was kind of interesting to about photography, but we'll see again where that plays out. So that's as far as I kind of got with the first episode. You know, let me know what you think. I hope this isn't too much of a spoiler or ruin the game, but really just kind of give you a heads up on what this is. Maybe if someone's stuck, they can kind of watch and get a little bit of a hint about something. Um, but here, here's my experience. I thought it was a lot of fun. Took um, a lot longer than in the, the this video I made. I felt the first episode was actually pretty easy. Um, but I think I know, I think they did this on purpose. That way you get an easy win, you get excited, and you want to continue. And if it's too challenging up front, people tend to shut down. So I really hope that the other ones become um, a little, you know, a little more difficult. Have, have me take a little more time to figure it out. Um, but I really think this is a good opener and perhaps, you know, I'll get some more answers to some questions that I have and perhaps, you know, kind of continue along with the story here.